Hello and welcome to another Conversations with Dr. Westman. Today we're going to be chatting about exogenous ketones. And we also have a bonus for you. It's Dr. Westman's free 10 things you need to know to lose fat on a keto diet. We'll put a link for you in the description. Eric, how's it going? Great. How are you, Glenn? Very, very good. Thank you. So, Eric, uh, what actually is the difference between, um, we often hear the word exogenous ketones, uh, and we get something called endogenous ketones. So there's two different big words there. Maybe you can help us simplify and break those two big words down for us. Sure. So um, it's important to, I guess, know that um, exogenous means exo, means outside like the exoskeleton of something is the skeletons on the outside of the animal, like a crab, uh, where we have an endoskeleton, meaning the skeletons inside our body. So the endogenous means ketones come from within. Exogenous, E-X-O, means the ketones have to be uh, consumed. A, a drink, a, a eating it, a pill, a product, something like that. So exogenous ketones are this new type of uh, product that can be consumed that raises ketone levels, exogenous ketones, but endogenous ketones are ones that your body makes by itself. So most people don't know that when you are on a keto diet with real food, you don't have to eat or drink ketones. Your, your body makes the ketones by itself from the fat burning. So fat burning, which is what you wanna do if you're trying to lose body fat, lose weight, uh, generates its own, your own ketones called endogenous ketones or, or ketones from within. Uh, so that's the big difference. It, um, and it's confusing to folks because uh, there are a lot of, um, I mean, when I'm using the internet today to teach, all these ads come up and, and you know, they're pretty compelling. So something that was very, very interesting to me, uh, you know, about six years ago, is the fact that there was um, these ketones that your body produces that's actually a physiological change that happens inside your body. And I thought it was just incredible because every other diet out there, um, you know, it's just um, telling you to, you know, eat a certain way, but there's no you know, physiological change. Whereas with a keto diet, um, these ketones get produced and it's, um, it's, it's just from limiting the carbs that you, that you, uh, that you implement the diet like that. Yeah, and you know, the it's a different metabolic state, if you will. It's called nutritional ketosis. That's to differentiate, to, to make it different than say diabetic ketoacidosis or, or you know, some other type of ketosis. Nutritional ketosis happens when you just limit the carbohydrates to a very low level. And, you know, a lot of people smarter than I who have looked at the history of what humans eat. They argue that people, humans probably were in ketosis for longer than not in ketosis because carbohydrates, which if you eat a carb, you have to burn the carb, turn off the ketones and the fat burning really effectively. So you're not in ketosis if you eat a lot of carbs but humans probably didn't eat many carbs until just very relatively recently. So it's been argued that the natural, uh, the way we've been adapted as humans is to actually eat a keto diet. And I think that's part of why it's become so popular. The, the science uh, so, is solid, the research has been done. And then the people who've been talking about the ancestral diet, the, the hunter-gatherer kind of diet have all kind of compared notes and, and said, well, gosh, we've all been saying sort of the same thing that, you know, not eating carbohydrates, which is the, the key to get, getting ketones. is probably a very healthy thing to do. Now, around about five years ago, um, exogenous ketones started to become buzzword and companies popped up everywhere selling these products. Um, in your opinion, is there any benefits to these type of products that uh, these exogenous ketones? Well, you know, there's a difference between a perceived benefit, which uh, was explained to be, be explained to me by one of the companies. Well, people get benefit from it, and and then actually a scientifically proven benefit. So <laughs> I, I wait to recommend things until there's scientifically proven benefit. You know, beyond placebo. 
So kind of like studying a, a new pill or a new product, I'm waiting until these new ketones, exogenous ketones have been studied with the, the rigorous science to say that we know for sure they're better than placebo. Now, so those studies haven't been done. We haven't seen, I, I was hoping there'd be by now, you know, just study after study after study showing how great these are because certainly people purchase the products, but those studies haven't been done. So I've been reluctant to say, here, go do this use exogenous ketones because I have a method where you get your ketones from within without having a product. <laughs> so um, I'm really still kind of waiting for those studies to be done. Now, they may have been done and not published because they didn't work, which is always a suspicion when you go and you, you don't see positive studies. But I, I'm not even aware of any buzz about studies that have been done that have been negative. Um, but, you know, there's no question uh, an exogenous ketone can raise your ketone level. So a lot of people will think that's all they need to do is drink the ketones, measure the level, and oh, I'm great. No, I want to have it studied in the context of an entire dietary pattern of eating to show that there's benefit beyond just the foods. And I haven't seen those studies yet. So if our bodies make ketones... Um... Why do we need to buy these products? <laughs> well, there's been some fascinating lectures about human behavior and the, the belief that we need to take things to get better. There's, you know, there's a whole a group of people, percentage of the population who believe in having nutrients like nutrition and vitamins, vitamin here, vitamin, vitamin mix and all these things. So it's just human nature to want to take something to get better. <laughs> so the, the lecture that I saw is that if all you do is take away something, people think like nothing's changing or, or if anything, the change is a bad thing. <laughs> so on a keto diet, when you take away carbohydrates, um, you're basically depriving people of certain foods and, and uh, they often feel like they need to take a drink or a powder or a pill. And so um, that's called the psychology of subtraction. Um, so uh, a lot of people will take pills for weight loss and keto pills that don't work, even though because they'll see it on TV or on an ad um, and not learn about changing the food in a way where you don't even need the pills at all, like I do with my patients. I would imagine that, um, and so I've heard, um, there's, a, there's, a, there's a waiting period. So for example, when you, when you limit the carbs and you do it your way, um, it could take anywhere from three days to four weeks to get into nutritional ketosis. Whereas people want the instant gratification and they can take these exogenous ketones and within a few minutes, they can you know, do a, a blood, glucose, a blood a ketone reading and see that they are in ketosis within a few minutes. Right, so that you, you will get that positive reinforcement very quickly. But again, I, I'm waiting with the, I'm a physician, I, I'm used to having things evaluated at a level that drugs are evaluated, you know, with FDA approval. So, you know, that that's all well and good. And if, if it's been explained to me by these companies that that's a benefit that people perceive. Well, well, that's fine, but that doesn't mean I'm going to be endorsing it for that purpose. Um, uh, but, uh, you know, the, the um, products, it, it's fascinating because this has also opened a new area of research into ketone and nutritional ketosis metabolism. I mean, for example, the early research of just drinking ketones without changing the diet at all can change things. So the early research on uh, neurologic diseases, for example, I saw a study where the there's a tremor that goes along a shakiness with a disease called Parkinson's. And the study didn't have any, didn't change the diet for this individual. They just had him drink some ketones and the tremor went away for a little while and then came back. So the, what's fascinating is that you might be able to have someone drink or eat or, or swallow a pill to raise ketone levels. And you may have benefit from that by itself, but that's entirely different than me saying I'm going to help you lose weight and I'm going to teach you a method that will you'll be able to 
sustain the rest of your life because you've learned how to lose the weight in the same way that you maintain the weight loss. So, so it depends what you're trying to accomplish. I, I think it's exciting and I'm enthusiastic and optimistic about using ketones, uh, but I haven't seen studies, exogenous ketones, haven't seen studies saying adding exogenous ketones improves the, the endogenous ketones you get from just changing the diet. You know, I'd like to do that study. I mean, should a company be interested? I certainly have a lot of patients who follow keto diets without those products. It would be interesting to add it in to see if there is a benefit beyond just the diet alone. But a lot of people actually, um, my understanding, and so what I've, what, I've, what I've learned over the years is that a lot of people continue on their high carb diet but then take the, the, the ketones to get it almost like a hack. So, um, you know, whereas- yeah, I, don't think, I don't think that's going to work very well for weight loss or fixing diabetes. No. That's, yeah. yeah. So, so well, you, mean- you know, a common sense takeaway is you try, try a new diet or a medicine, or if it's not working in a couple of weeks, go on to something new <laughs> because something with nutritional ketosis, a low carb keto diet, works that fast. So you'll know, you know, actually in the first couple of days, the hunger goes away for most people. That's when the ketosis is kicking in without drinking or eating or popping a pill with ketones in it. So um, Eric, uh, I really appreciate all your information, but before we go, one last question. Um, they have been, as far as I'm aware, I'm not sure to what extent the studies have been done, but there have been some mouse studies. Are you aware of any of these mouse studies? And, and what is your opinion on mouse studies versus human studies? Well, I think animal studies that use animals other than humans are interesting and fascinating, and they can get you into the mechanism, mechanism of action of things. And so that these... Um, uh, other animal models have been actually very in, encouraging about using ketones or a, a diet that has ketones, nutritional ketosis for things like cancer and Alzheimer's and other neurodegenerative issues. But there's a big leap to go from the animal models to the human. And uh, so there are a lot of, you know, most of the time things don't work in humans like it did in the mice or the rats. So um, you want to just be careful to not uh, blanketly follow someone who's just talking about a mouse model of ketosis, for example. And I'm seeing this uh, being done where people think that the, because the ketone level and the glucose ketone index is a certain way in an animal, that that's the way we need it in a human. We just don't know that. We don't know that. And the ketosis metabolism in mice is very different because their brain is very different, very different size. And, and so um, you want to be very careful to not immediately think what happened in the mouse will happen in the human, that it, those studies need to be done again with people being the research subjects. Excellent, Eric. Well, thank you so much for your insights into this uh, fascinating topic. Uh, I'm sure we'll revisit this topic at a later stage and uh, who knows, maybe there'll, there'll be a study that you'll be involved in and we can, we can find out a little bit more. Uh, so that's all there is for today, folks. Um, don't forget to get your bonus. It's uh, Dr. Westman's free 10 things you need to know to lose fat on keto. We'll put a link for you in the description. Um, if you'd like to learn more about Adapt Your Life Academy and our upcoming courses, you can visit us on uh, Adapt Your Life Academy dot com eric until next week thank you so much once again and we look forward to catching up again in a week's time on another interesting topic thank you so much if you like this video you're going to love our adapt your life academy so click on the link in the description to find out more